there. Good to see you again. Here's a riddle for you. What do you get if you cross an old master painter with a bit of rock and roll with a little bit of a dinosaur thrown in? You get this. Yes, old Picasso himself would love this. Abstract art out of an old box. And I've got an excellent cheat way of drawing a pteranodon. And there's a rock and roll in Big Art Attack. Oh, sorry, I'm not ignoring you or anything. I'm just trying to decide what to wear for a fancy dress party. I was thinking about just wearing this T-shirt. What do you think? What do you mean it's boring? It's not the T-shirt. It's what's under it that counts. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what do you think? Perfect for fancy dress parties. Or, just to freak out your friends, show them what's under your T-shirt. <laughs> oh, I needed that. <laughs> Simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. <laughs> First, you need to start with what the aliens attach to, a plastic bin bag. Cut it in half and it's the top part that you want, so throw the other piece away. Now, you need the top part because it's got an opening at the top and now at this end. And the idea is to cut this bit down one side and you can then open it out to make one long strip. Now, it's a good idea to make sure that it fits around your waist at this stage. Yep, that works. Now you can create your alien. Lay your bin bag strip down and scrunch up some newspaper into a small parcel shape and tape it to the middle of the bin bag strip. Now this will make the alien's body. Then scrunch and tape a smaller ball on top of this one for the head. The alien's eyes are more newspaper, this time the size of a golf ball attached to a twist of newspaper for eye stalks. Make three like this and tape them to the top of the head. Then bend a long twist of newspaper round into a mouth shape and tape that under the eyes. And you could even add in some cardboard triangles for teeth. Now I'm using double-sided tape for this. In it goes. And finally, tape four stubby newspaper sausages together for hands and tape one to either side of your alien's body. And the other one on the other side. And remember to use lots of tape to keep everything together and to keep your alien well and truly attached to the bin bag strip. Now, let's bring him to life. Paint him using acrylic paints. Now you can use alien shades of purple. <laughs> you can mix in different shades, can't you? Mix in some darker purple or even some pink for his alien skin. And how about luminous orange lips? And of course white for his eyes. And even some pink alien spots on his body. And when you finish painting your alien and he's dry, give him some extra strength by slopping on a layer of PVA glue mixed with water. Now, don't worry, because the PVA glue dries clear and shiny, so not only does it strengthen your alien, but it also gives it a good, slimy alien effect. Look at that shining away there. Now all you need to do is get him to burst through your T-shirt. And do me a favour, use an old one and get permission first. I don't want to hear about anyone using the best top for this. <laughs> so, tie your alien around your waist and put your old baggy T-shirt on over the top. Then, feel where the head is and carefully make a mark where your alien is and then take your T-shirt back off. Lay your T-shirt down, then carefully snip a hole where the mark is. Now, be careful not to cut right through to the back of your T-shirt and, of course, mind your fingers. When you've snipped the hole, open it up just enough to pull your alien through so he looks like he's bursting through the T-shirt. And as a finishing touch, take some green paint and paint some green slime dripping from where he's bursting through. And when you put it on, it really looks as if that's what's lurking under your T-shirt. And they look great as a fancy dress costume. <laughs> or... 
just to freak out your friends. <laughs> and if you want to be a cyborg and have mechanical bits under your skin, instead of making a newspaper alien, just stick bits of packing, like sandwich boxes and tops of coffee cups and even drinking straws to the bin bag strip and then paint it metallic colours. Good, eh? Try it yourself. What's lurking under your skin? Okay, pay attention please, time for a spelling lesson. This is a Pteranodon, one of the pterosaur family of dinosaurs. Now, strangely, when it comes to spelling, Pteranodon is spelt with a P. P is for Pteranodon. Okay, spelling lesson over, because when it comes to drawing, T is for Pteranodon, T, Aranodon. <laughs> Now, don't worry, I'm not trying to get you sent to the bottom of the class. It's just that when it comes to drawing a pteranodon, think of the letter T, not P. Watch this. Draw a letter T leaning over at an angle, then a slightly smaller one above it and a smaller one below it. And it's a good idea to draw them lightly at first, as these letter T's will be the skeleton shape to draw your pteranodon on. On the big T, just draw a long body with a pointy tail at the end. The top of the T is its arms with bony claws. And the top of the bottom T is its legs with clawed feet. The top T is a curved neck. The head is a flat egg shape, a sort of rugby ball shape. 
It has a long pointed beak at the front with an open mouth to look fierce. And a long pointy crest at the back of the head. And don't forget an eye and a nostril. Now the interesting bit. The Pteranodon had a long bony wing finger that extended out from each hand. So let's put that in. There we go. Curve these bones right out and then hang the skin on for the wings. And there's the shape of your Pteranodon, all built on three letter T's, one on top of the other. Now to give it some shape and texture. Just hint at a rib cage. Now put some stretch creases on the wings going from the hands. And just shade it in brown. And just add hints of green shading. Add an orange eye, some black shading around the eye. And finally, draw around something circular to create a sun. and a bit of mist to make it really atmospheric. And just hint at some prehistoric mountains, shrouded in the mists of time. And there he is, a pteranodon. So remember, you spell pteranodon with a P, but when it comes to drawing, T is for pteranodon. <laughs> now, you know me, I'm always up for a bit of recycling, especially when it's turning something you're about to throw away into art. And it seems I'm not the only one. Take a look at this.
And I thought I was clever, eh? <laughs> Me, the art attack man. <laughs> I thought I was clever. Until I saw the stuff that you keep sending in. It's brilliant. Take a look at this lot in my art attack gallery. Ah, now Michel's embroidered picture shows that you don't have to stick to using pens and pencils to create an art attack when coloured thread works just as well. Brilliant! And this joint effort by Lauren and Paige is fabulous. They've captured the waterfall perfectly and I love the foliage effect they've painted at the sides. And I really like the composition of this art attack, James. Offsetting the detail into one corner of your picture is unusual, but really effective. And Daniel's abstract face, drawn in chalk pastels, is really bold and surreal. That's a sign of genius, if you ask me. Yeah, brilliant abstract face, Daniel. A touch of the um, Picasso influence there? Hmm. Well, if Daniel has been influenced by Picasso, I've been influenced by Daniel. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to go 3D. Now, first, you're going to need a few boxes, any size or shape will do. Then pick out the one that you want to turn into a 3D face. This one looks good. Then start thinking, but think abstract. Well, this is a boring rectangle box at the moment, so start by breaking up its shape. Now, you can do this any way you like, but I'm going to start about halfway up one side of the cardboard box and cut a diagonal to the bottom like this, and then the same on the other side, but this time I'm going to continue around the side and down the back again on a diagonal. See that? Down it goes on the diagonal. On the first diagonal, just cut out a triangular eye. So I'm just going to get my scissors in there and over it goes to create an eye hole. Then lift the lid and just crush the top corner a bit just press everything in a little bit to alter the shape of the box. This doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is to just alter the shape. And when you've done that, tape it all into place. And this is the basic head shape. So now you need some features. For this, use the corners of the other boxes you've collected. One for an eye. And one for a nose. Slightly off centre and then another eye, this time upside down. In fact, just keep experimenting and your abstract face will start to appear. And tape everything down, then brush on some PVA glue mixed half and half with water and paste a layer of kitchen paper all over your abstract face, sealing over all the joins. And when you've covered over all of your abstract face and it's dry, you'll have something that looks like this. Look at that. And now you can paint it in an abstract cubist style, just like Picasso. Now, acrylic paint works really well for this, and as you can see, I've drawn angular shapes all over it, and I've painted every shape a different colour, and I've even added in two white eyes and picked out all of the shapes with black marker pen, and that all adds to that zany effect. And if you really want to go crazy, you can even create lots of different designs for your own abstract gallery. Try it yourself, 3D Picasso faces. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. And I will see you next time. Ta-ra!